Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Now, years ago before we met, I had a dream. And that dream was to one day own a working 1930s television set. And we made it happen. We did. And here's how! So one of the first projects we worked on together was this television that you've always wanted. Yep. Explain that. Yeah, well, uh, gosh, I wanted an old, what looked like an old 1930s television yeah. set where I could just watch old movies on. Um, but I wanted to be able to stream from Netflix, like some kind of device. Like a Roku and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. So I brought that up to you, um, and you said yes. 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 <laughs> which is awesome. Um, and that was the first, like one of the first big projects that we jumped into. And it ended up being bigger than maybe we thought. It yeah, it turned be... into a lot more work, you know, than we originally expected yeah. because of the different elements that it actually needed to pull off that 19, what, 30s, 1940s television set? Yeah, and it's kind of a fusion. It wasn't really based on any particular no. TV set. It was just the one that I had in my mind. Well, yeah. You know? So I dusted off the sketchbook wish list and showed those drawings to you. And for the screen, I tracked down an old computer monitor. Which had to be square though, because if we w went with any kind of large formatted screen, it just doesn't match that era. Exactly, and we right. would have lost the edge of the exactly, picture there. Yeah. And we wanted, most importantly, to have that rounded corner That shape, frame. yeah, like the cowl that goes around there. I mean, that's what we actually ended up making. So off to the side here, we had something like this that we ended up fabricating. And even make separate tooling so we were able to make that piece to fit the screen, all custom made, and then this went onto the vacuum form table and we were able to pull this out of a piece of plastic. The vacuum form tool itself is a bunch of pieces of wood that we cut out to the shapes, the desired shapes that we needed, uh, and then we had gone and filled it with Bondo to create that nice scoop that would go into the monitor. Yeah. This piece itself is all made out of MDF, it's got some Bondo on it, uh, a lot of sanding, and then all these little holes that you see that go along here. Uh, is to help make sure that we get a really clean, tight pull. So when you look at these other pieces over here, you get a really nice, clean edge. If you see, you know, it's shrunk a little bit, but it fits onto that piece, and then that pops off, and then there's the cowl for the television. And then in order to attach that cowl to the cabinet, we had to figure out a mounting bracket of some kind. We actually engineered a piece of resin that we, once we were done making this vacuum form tool, here's our vacuum form piece, we actually poured urethane resin inside there to make it rigid so we can bolt it to the unit. And we actually use the vacuum form tool itself as the mold to pour this urethane piece that was actually the mounting bracket. Yeah. Is everybody getting this? So, yep. Lots of pieces just to make that little front screen look sexy. <laughs> just to make it look cool, but it's worth it. And at the bottom too, the monitor itself had a power button and a menu button and all that kind of stuff that we'd need to access, but we're covering it up. So it's yeah. like, okay, well, now we have to create a way to get in there to press the buttons. Well, you can't actually reach the buttons, so. No, so we had an engineer, <laughs> once this insert went in, we engineered a secondary piece that went inside here, and I actually took apart pens and used the springs from those and then had some pop rivets and created a whole assembly that went inside here so you can actually adjust your screen, you can turn the power on, you can adjust any of the other color balancing on it um, without messing with the aesthetic. You just eventually have a couple little dots here and you have little buttons that you can press. Yeah, which visually they pretty much go away. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And then design-wise, of course, you've got to have those big, huge, chunky retro knobs that, oh, yeah. that the old TVs had. Um, but and, luckily enough. Yeah, fortunately we have a wealth <laughs> of old knobs. So it's like, which don't smell that great. No, it smells very old. <laughs> we need to decontaminate these. <laughs> but yeah, going through and finding the proper knobs and the proper, you know, dials uh -huh. and stuff to make it all work so it really fit that, that era. Yeah, and for me, the knobs were just a cool design element. But then you go, but we gotta make those knobs work. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then you ended up actually taking apart the little speakers that we use to connect to the TV. And, and basically retrofitting them to old knobs, so therefore you could still do your bass treble and volume. Yep. Um, they, we had to take the whole entire speaker apart uh -huh. and then run and re-solder 
cables throughout the whole TV. Micro solder. Micro solder. Things then. are so tiny. Super tiny. But then once we got it all in there, it all functioned, and you would never be able to guess that we had to do that much engineering. Even just creating the outer shell of the piece, mm -hmm. what was nice about uh, you know appliances and stuff like that back in the day, and you know televisions or phones, they were decorative. It was furniture. It's furniture. Yeah. So the whole outside of it, we actually made it like a nice piece of wood furniture. Yeah, and to plan it, because we were kind of working around the monitor that I purchased, yeah, we ended up making it out of foam core first. We did a complete mock-up first. Yeah, to yeah. get an idea, just because we wanted to get the feel of it. How big should this thing be? How yeah. tall should it be? It gave us a chance to figure out the mounting mechanism for the monitor itself. Yeah, prior to the to inside, building it. which yeah. was handy, yeah. That but definitely helps a lot. And I think we had modified it quite a bit though. Like when we first started, maybe it was a little bit bigger here, a little bit taller there, mm -hmm. and we were able to bring it all down. Once we also started finding our other components, mm -hmm. our old school wheels, our old school vacuum yeah. retractable plug. Yeah, so one of the things that I wanted <laughs> is I wanted to have wheels on the cabinet so I could move it around and a long enough cord so that it would be able to reach. Right? So I was like, okay, I need to find some kind of retractable cord. So I found a replacement part for a vacuum cleaner mm -hmm. that has that little thing and when it arrived it was a lot larger than we thought it was going to be about five times the size we thought <laughs> it was, it was like going to be this yeah big round but we figured out how to make it work yeah and it worked great so yeah. I mean, there's some parts that we had to cut mm -hmm. <laughs> to make uh -huh. it fit but it ended up fitting just great and yeah we even went on there and took off the original plug and that it came with the edison plug and it came with and put in a like an old school I would guess probably 1950s yeah. um, plug head on there. Yeah, retro plug retro head. Retro plug head, and it, yeah. and it just looked great. It, it just matches so perfectly. Yeah, it's so cool. So cool. So it's down even just to the smallest detail of just the plug. What does it look like? Yeah, the process of plugging it into the wall is even vintage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like plugging things in vintage. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, then we just dialed in the decorative components for the outside, the little side frames, the routering style we wanted, uh, the way that we wanted to stack the top, again, like a piece of antique furniture. Yep. We even ended up mixing our own stain, yep. just to give it the right flavor. Yeah, just um, to make our own our own feel and to give it that vintage stain look instead of just like a plain color. Yeah, and then cutting that little curved skirt piece and that little shape. Oh yeah. Very cool. That just kind of covers up the casters a little bit. And gives yeah. it that nice sort of, you know, clean edge that looks like it's from that time. And then you suggest the idea of putting some handles on the side. Like if it rolls, yeah. well then like where do you grab it? Well, they would make little handles and put it on exactly. the side, you know? And so we went through your bin of handles and found some great oh, ones yeah. that just work. Yeah. What's funny is that those handles too is that from a dresser I grew up with that was probably from the fifties. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of Manchester history. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just again, I didn't throw them away even from as, as a kid. It's just we got rid of the dresser. I'm like, let's keep the hardware. I'll be using these in the future. Exactly. Yep. And then of course we mounted modern speakers inside, so obviously you don't see them, but then created a faux speaker Like a face. grid, yeah, like a face Yeah, because a lot of those old TVs and old speakers had like that fabric back behind the metal grating, which we ended up using some burlap. But yeah, the process itself though, I mean, just to get that piece that we discussed earlier, that vacuum form piece, we had to build a whole entire vacuum form machine. So again, that'd be a different show. <laughs> Make sure to check that one out. And so, that is how my dream of owning a working 1930s television set came true. And the best part is, I get to watch old episodes of my favorite TV program, The Spark and Cody Show. We'll guide all that you do. You'll see. Imagination is great. We can't wait to see all that you'll create. That's right, Cody. And though it's time to say goodbye, remember, to all creators, big or small, let's stay inspired one and all. See you next time. <laughs> Goodbye. Stay inspired.